Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us and welcome back to the G20 Digital Innovation Network's Healthcare Pitching Session. For those of you who are attending this event virtually, we would like to recommend for you to use your headphones for better sound quality. And for those of you who are in attendance in this breakout room, please do take your seats as we are set to begin shortly. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom. Om swastiastu, om budaya. Greetings of virtue and peace and virtue to us all. Thank you for joining us today and welcome back to the G20 Digital Innovation Network's healthcare pitching session. My name is Paul Palelli. I'm so glad to be here with you all on the second day, uh, for the second day in a row now. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank all of you that are in attendance and those of you that are in attendance virtually as well for taking your times out of your schedule to join us today. Let us start by saying hello to our judges who are back here for a second day. Our first judge is a senior principal at Kearney who is a career management consultant with 14 plus years of top tier strategy and operational consulting experience across the Middle East, Europe, and Asia. Throughout these years, he has delivered and led business models and regulation developed through advising CXOs, government ministries, and regulators on strategic issues, and designing and implementing solutions with tangible impacts. He has a strong passion as well for emerging technologies such as 5G, cloud, artificial intelligence, and machines. Please welcome Mr. Rohit Sethi. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, guys. And as well joining us here today is the Technical Officer in Innovation at the World Health Organization. Most recently, she was the Head of Healthcare Transformation at the World Economic Forum. Prior to the forum, she served as Deputy Minister of Health and Chair of the National Health Insurance Fund in Bulgaria. And in that capacity, she was also the Chair of the Standing Committee of the Regional Committee of WHO Euro. She holds a BA from Bodoin College, MPA from Princeton University, and a PhD in Health Management from the National Medical University in Sofia. Please welcome back Ms. Desislava Dimitrova. And last but not least, we have our third ju judge joining us virtually. She's the co-founder and managing partner of Anchor Capital Fund, the early stage fund that invests in transformative technologies for the next billion Indians. They invest in high returns in non-conventional opportunities in these markets and have been pioneers in agri-tech investing in India. The Anchor Capital Fund portfolio covers across ag-tech, health-tech, ed-tech, fintech, and other enabling tech up to $5 million. Please welcome back as well Ms. Rema Subramanian. And we'd like to also welcome all of the government representatives Welcome. For those of you that are just joining, please do take a seat. 
The founders of the startups that are going to present with us today, thank you for joining us as well, as well as all the other invitees. Now, before we get started, let me just run through the format again real quick for those of you that uh, have not presented yet. Each startup will have four minutes from the start to the end of their presentation. You will hear a warning bell 10 seconds before the four minutes is up, and then you will hear a double bell at the end of the time limit. Now, uh, following that, the judges will then have a chance to ask questions. It may be one question or more, but you do have three minutes to answer. So if there's only time for one answer and within that three minutes, then we will wrap up at the end of the time limit. However, if there's still more time, then the judges are free to ask more questions at that time. At that point, the judges will then have one minute or up to one minute to score each startup. And all of you in attendance as well will have a chance to uh, contribute and take the opportunity to score while we put up a QR screen like this one up behind me. And today we do have seven startups joining us, two of them virtually, five in person. So let's say hello first to we for leadership who is joining us virtually, Neurobots, UCARE AI, AppLife Biotech Corporation, STAM, Untech, and DDM Health. All right, so let's uh, get started. Without any further ado, we will now join our first startup virtually, we for leadership Are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you? Hi there. How are everyone? Okay, great. So the screen is yours. Go ahead. Good luck. Hi everyone, enterprises are the first stop to drive a happier and healthier world in adult life and we are helping them to understand the why, the data and how and the benefits. The world is living a happiness crisis in adult life for COVID. Uh, on one side, going to work today means tremendous amounts of stress and loss of work-life balance. On the other hand, companies are looking for the magic solution to enhance people engagement. Let me share with you some data. Let me show, uh, only 30% of the employees feel progress in their overall well-being. People feel overly stressed even more than 2020. At least one in three people who work in have excessive stress. And about the engagement, only 21% of employees are truly engaged. 40% of job turnover is due to the stress. In America, the cost of health care caused by stress is 300 billion a year in health costs abstinence and poor performance. Maybe this is the first time in history that companies really want to avoid or solve this issue. I'm faithfully believer that we should change this paradigm and achieve new business culture to change the planet, develop, developing human-centered organizations. So what we are doing to solve this? We develop an assessment based on people analytics and artificial intelligence to identify the most sensitive opportunities to create a happy and productive organizations, integrating the vision of positive psychology and happiness science. The main four areas of focus are organizational well-being, personal happiness, grit and resilience, and high-performance team. We have called these positive and human organizations. To develop to this to develop this tool, sorry, we run an investigation to identify the main variables to help to create organizations focused on well-being and the factor that helps people to be happier. Currently, we already have a formal agreement with two of the most important business chambers in Mexico, and we are already working with, the, with them to collect more data and help the people and their culture, and we are working too with most iconic companies in Latin. The existing platforms are focused on the companies and only in the people, and they are expensive to startups that are expanding. Our market begins at the small business. In, 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 in Latam, this, this business are employed more than 500% of the people in all Latam. We are potentially a billion dollar company with high impact on people. The human positive assessment is too easy to use in companies, just 15 minutes to use. I measure we have a pulse, we have an identification uh, with an artificial intelligence to understand the, the environment of the companies. Our team, our team is made up of multifunctional specialists who have a background in statistics and engineering, but who also have experience and credentials in the area of positive psychology, health science, and happiness science. Our profit model 
is achieved in three ways. The acquisition of a year assessment, the bi-monthly measurement polls throughout the year, and community membership. Finally, we generate profits for synchronous development programs that provide support in culture trans transformation. Our business plan, 22, obtain seed capital, 23, we going to, we're going to create a SaaS system and 24 expansion. expansion. Enterprise are the pieces stop to drive a happier and healthy world. My name is Gonzalo, and this is Human and Positive Assessment. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you, We for Leadership. Uh, and at this time, we would like to invite uh, Ms. Rema Subramanian to start the Q&A session. And the other judges, judges, feel free to join in uh, if there is time. We're going to put three minutes up. Go ahead. Uh, could we unmute your mic? I, uh, we won't, we're not able to hear you yet. No? Yes. Thank you. What's your go-to-market strategy? Could you repeat the question, please? What's your go-to-market strategy? How do you, what's the... Uh... Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Actually, today is a uh, big red of people, big network of people that is selling the tool. We are in the in the first phase, and we have a big social strategy uh, through different channels with other companies on other people that have specialties in uh, happiness science in LATAM. Just in LATAM, actually, Mexico first, and then we are thinking in other countries. And what's the base? basic uh, or the core value proposition with which you approach your customers? We give to them the data and information about the organization and the correlations of different variables to identify why, uh, what can they change in their company to create a more productive company, but in the same way, more happier company. So is there a metric that you would be defining? What's, what's their, uh, you know, how long will they take to realize the return on what they're making investment? I'm trying to grapple the fact that what's the value proposition which you, will, with which you can approach a customer and what's, the, what's their takeaway from that? I mean, what's the selling process? I'm not able to get that. Yes, perfect. They get to... to um two tools. The first one, the yearly assessment. The second one, a bi-monthly measurement, like a pulse to understand uh, where the company is going. Uh, with, with that information, we gave to them what they had to do with the people and the culture to change the factors. That's also part of what you would be telling them, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, got it. Thanks. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a, so, is it just a concept, or you already have a product? We already have a beta product. Uh, actually, we are working with the most two most important uh, business chambers in Mexico, uh, helping them to get data, and we are already running, and we already uh, develop an investigation in the 2020 and 21, uh, working on that. Right, and you have any revenues already? Revenues? Yes, we have revenues. Uh, actually, while we're starting, we have a, a little bit. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So that wraps up the Q&A uh, segment for We4 Leadership. And uh, we'd now like to allow the judges a little bit of time for their deliberation and scoring, as well as all of you that would like to take part Please do scan the QR code on the screen while we prepare for our next startup.
Our second startup here on day two is joining us in person, so I'd like to invite Neurobots to come up on the stage. Good afternoon. So our timer is over there, four minutes on the clock. Neurobots, the uh, stage is yours. Good luck. So good morning, I am Julio Dantas and I'm here to present Neurobots, a neuroengineering startup from Brazil that works to set golden standards and become a global reference in neurological rehabilitation. Our first solution is for rehabilitation of stroke patients, disease that affects 16 million people each year around the world and is the biggest cause of motor disability worldwide. To solve this problem, we developed Exobots, a brain-computer interface for neurological rehabilitation. Basically, we have a robotic glove that's controlled by the brain. But how that works? We capture brain signals and we ask for the patient to think in her, his head moving, to imagine his head moving, which is called motor imagery. This imagination brings a brain activation that's captured by our, by our sensor. And when we identify this specific brain pattern, the exoskeleton moves the patient's head. So this way, we are associating again a brain activation with the movement in real time, and this allows us to promote neuroplasticity, ability of the own brain to make new connections and restore those damages. Let me show you some results. In the left side, a patient after two years of stroke, and in the right side, the same patient after two weeks using our therapy. This was a patient of our first clinical trial in 2018, and we had an average recover of 30% in just 10 sessions of therapy using our, our solution. So we have a business model based in hardware as a service. We have an initial fee of certification of $800 and a, a fee of $10 for each session applied with our solution. Now we are in 107 clinics in Brazil and we had the request from five different countries and we achieved the break-even point right now. Uh, our second solution is NeuroDisplay. It's the first neurofeedback solution for companies. Basically, we work inside of companies to reduce anxiety and improve focus using neurofeedback. But how neurofeedback works? Basically, we work with a brain, with a scientific concept called uh, operant conditioning that's giving enforcement for the positive uh, behaviors, in this case positive brain patterns and negative feedbacks for the opposite. So using our solution, people can learn how to control, how to improve his mind control. In 2017, we were awarded by Pfizer as best early stage startup in Brazil. In 2019, we were awarded by University of Berkeley in California, finalists of MIT Solve, and we were awarded in Spain by MAFRI. Uh, this is some of our partners. Hospital Albert Einstein is our main investor and the best hospital in Latin America. And now we are in acceleration process in South Korea in K Grand Challenge Startup. Our, we are a 17 people team today with PhDs in physical therapies, artificial intelligence, and biomedical engineering. And when we look for the big future, for the big picture, we have all of these. Uh, disease that can be treated using our, our uh, technology, like ADD, ADD, almost 6% of population has a huge problem. But for us, it's not enough to show, to look for the, only look for the future. We have to find a piece of that future in each corner of the road. So let me show you guys a piece of that future. In the left side, a patient after a car accident, she had a spinal cord injury when she was pregnant. So she's child born and he was like that. And in the right side, the same patient after the robots treatment, exobots. So this is the kind of future that we are trying to do. And that is why we are changing lives through neuroengineering. Thank you all. We are neurobots. Thank you, neurobots. Good stuff. So uh, we'd now like to invite uh, Mr. Sethi to open our Q&A session. Thank you. Right. Do you have any existing revenues and have you done any funding rounds before? Uh, revenues, yes. We are probably going to achieve uh, $600,000 $600, this year in revenues. And the other, the other question was, can you repeat the other the question? The funding rounds. 
Yeah, funding. Funding round. we get a, a pre-seed pre round. Now we are trying to seed bridge for next get a Series A. Right. Do you have any patents for your hardware and software? Yes, we applied a patent about our, about our exoskeleton, the mechanism of our exoskeleton. And about the software is like secret. Uh, we don't patent it, but we have a, a commercial secret, an industrial secret about the software. So we developed the exoskeleton, the software, and the sensor as well. Right. And who is paying for the product? The medical centers. No. We work with uh, rehabilitation centers. So they pay for a certification process when we, we teach how to use the equipment, what the scientific basis behind this technology. And then the patients go for the clinics, does the sessions, and the clinics pays for us $10 for each session applied with our equipment. So that $800 is more than enough to cover all of our initial costs to implant this, this equipment inside of the clinics, and then we receive for the use of our, use of our solution. And will you go for FDA certification or any other scientific uh, certification of the two devices? Yes, the exobots, the exoskeleton is, uh, we are looking for KFDA approval now, now in Korea. We are trying, uh, starting to do this process. And about the other solution, the neuro display, we are trying to get approach like more mindfulness. So we don't need the, the certification for the, the neuro display. Okay, we have about one minute left. Uh, perhaps Ms. Subramanian, if you have a question, you can address it now. So there are quite a few Thank solutions you. like this in the market. Can you hear me? Can you repeat, please? There are uh, quite a few solutions globally which are working in this space. Uh, what do you think is your edge against the others? Yes, our differential, let me show you. Uh, there's no slide more. But uh, we work about the exobots. We are one of the only companies that are working for rehabilitation, motor rehabilitation. And about neuro display, there is a plenty of brain sensors out there. But we are trying to approach companies to improve. Uh, we use our, our sensor for really change uh, the, the, how people can control his mind inside of companies. So it's more like how, uh, how, what, how we are doing and not what we do. Thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you, Neurobots. You may return to your seat while we give the judges some time for deliberation. Thanks. And as well, we're going to put up that QR screen. Good job. Big round of applause. As we sanitize and set the stage for our next presentation, judges, feel free for your scoring. And next up, also here live with us, we have UCARE AI. Please come up on the stage. Okay, there's your clicker. Uh, you want to make sure that's all good. Four minutes to go in your presentation. Good luck. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's very exciting and honor to be here to share with you what we're doing at UCARE.ai. My name is Neil. I am the CTO. Six years ago, uh, after 30 plus years in the high tech corporate world, I decided to do things differently. Three things. The first one is I don't want to do technology just for the technology's sake. I want to be production ready, addressing business impact. Second one, I want to enable anyone who's interested in machine learning can do so. So we got to do it easy. Third, I want to bring impact to healthcare. And that's the genesis of UK. We are an award-winning deep tech startup. We're focusing on bringing enterprise-grade, production-ready, end-to-end AI system for our clients. We, working with our client, we built healthcare predictions year in the future to help patients, care providers, and payers to make the healthcare more effective and efficient. 
Here's the three examples of the algorithm we have built, deployed, end-to-end -end for our clients. For example, the first one, I'll go expect. It's a hospitalization cost prediction model that's been running in all Singapore Parkway Pantai hospitals since 2018. In addition, this, this model basically predicts the total cost of hospitalization at the point of admission front desk. Since we're in Indonesia, I want to share some news with you. We are going ahead to deploy Algo Expect across Silawam Hospital in Indonesia. That's 43 plus hospitals. Next one, Algo Detect. It's an outlier detection model for healthcare claim. So specifically, we look for any outlier that potentially could be over-servicing, overcharging, or even fraudulent. It is deployed at Singapore Ministry of Health since last year. Third one, Algo Protect. This is a risk prediction model that we have built. So specifically, you look for certain healthcare conditions, uh, the risk factor associated with it. So let me share with you examples. One, when patient gets discharged from hospitals, which patients are highly to get rehospitalized? Right? Of course, associated with the cost and, and all that with it. Second one, in the case of COVID, can you predict someone who's most likely to get infected, given their social profile and physical interactions? So these are the examples that we have. Uh, we focus on healthcare because Neo want to impact healthcare. It's my commitment. But what we have built is actually applicable across various industries. So as we think about product extension and portfolio, we could easily go deep in the healthcare and insurance but we also could bring our common technologies across to in other areas as well. So in addition, because of what we have built, we could actually go building more high-performing models, specifically addressing business needs in the healthcare and in the insurance space. But we also could bring in our scalable technology platform, Algobox, and bring in the machine learning much faster in the vertical and allow a client to adopt machine learning faster and more effectively. So architecturally, we are scalable, integrated in real time. And the people we bring on board, I'm a technology guy, MIT, computer science, and been working in the industry for a long while. Of course, my founder, she's co-founder, she's an investment professional uh, from VC and uh, private equity before you care. We believe it. <laughs> you can finish up. You can wrap up. We believe in human in the loop. So we bring all the experts in to making sure that we deliver the results we're looking for. Uh, we're profitable uh, because we believe how the approach we're doing it. So we raised our Series A uh, in 2018 uh, for about 10 million Singapore dollars. Uh, we're profitable as of last year. And moving ahead, we're going to be looking at broadening the international footprint given the ease of COVID. And we also want to bring the technology Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kerry. I, uh, you'll have some time for the Q&A session, which we're going to invite uh, Ms. Dimitrova to uh, open up. We have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Just a bit more about uh, your attraction. So, because Singapore is a small, well, what are the other markets in addition to Indonesia? You alluded to it, but if you can speak a bit yeah, more. Yeah, because please. we are B2C and B2G, right? So, the, the people interaction is pretty critical. Given the COVID situation for the last two years, it was quite challenging. But the fact that we actually have built out our pipeline, that's why we're able to achieve the profitabilities. And let me go back a bit. Uh, the slide. Uh, so we are profitable uh, in terms of the revenues and our burn rate is managed, and we're very careful in terms of what we do. Uh, what is the competitive landscape for this kind of solutions, especially on the on the leakages? It seems there is quite a bit. Other yes. Solutions so the, the key differentiator is the end-to-end -end machine learning model because we got to work with the client in terms of their, you know, business systems, the business process, integrate it, and that's where we bring the value very very quickly. In comparison, we could actually work with the client in three months' time to actually deploy the system, versus some other competitions out there. It will take a bit longer. And then on top of that, because we build the machine learning model to be high performing, uh, we actually encourage our competition to do a blind test in terms of what the results of the prediction might be. 
Mr. Sethi, do you have uh, any questions to add on? Uh, on the B2C model, because I think the logos we see are more organizations, right? B2C, how do you plan to tap into that segment? B2C is much more longer term, and this is where it's coming back to the passion in terms of if you could predict someone's going to buy a certain item on e-commerce, why can't you predict someone's going to get sick, right? And this is the type of technology we're developing and pushing ahead. And the monetization model for the B2C, the individual, at this point, it's a bit challenging. That's why we go after the B2B and B2G at this point in time to access the data, really building up our capability, and hopefully one day we could go to B2C. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Subramanian, who is online, do you have any questions to add on to? No, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, you care AI. You may return to your seat. Good stuff. And we're going to prepare the stage while we give some time for our judges to deliberate further on, as well as the QR code that you guys can scan as well to take part and use this opportunity to help us with the scoring. This is day two, so this is the final day. We will have the announcement after this session. And in the meantime, we're at the uh, halfway point here in day two. So I'd like to invite our fourth startup to come on up on the stage, AppLife Biotech Corporation. Hi there, good day. Here's your clicker and your mic. You have four minutes up. Your presentation is on the screen. The stage is yours. Good luck. Hello, judges. Hello, audience. My name is Guido Rosenblum. I'm the scientific director at AppLife Biotech. I'm really excited to be here today to present you a technology that would be the foundation for the development of a new generation of digital biomedical diagnostic devices. Let me put you a framework where the company is impacted. So in healthcare, um, in healthcare, um, sorry. <laughs> um, if it's not working, you can just say next. Yeah. We'll click it for you. Sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Uh, sorry. Okay, let's go. So in healthcare, better than treating a disease is preventing it. Sorry. It's preventing it. And to facilitate prevention, we need access to portable diagnostic tests. Not working? Uh, portable diagnostic tests. Today, there are some initiatives pushing this paradigm forward. This is embarrassing. Today, there are some initiatives pushing this paradigm forward to obtain faster medical results and to make faster medical decisions. Among, among portable diagnostic devices, digital detection is a powerful tool for the future of healthcare. However, existing portable biosensors, they perform very low number of diagnostic tests, and even more, they perform similar diagnostic tests. Why is this? A biosensor is a digital, it's an electronic device that can analyze a biological sample. And it consists of a detection element, also known as a receptor or a molecular probe that binds to a target molecule and if this binding event is converted into electricity, we are in front of a digital biosensor. Biosensor, it's very difficult for biosensor manufacturers to obtain this type of receptor. And AppLife is creating the most advanced discovery technology to facilitate these companies to introduce novel digital diagnostic devices into the market. Our technology is based on our capacity to fabricate in situ, in predefined location, and in a very small area, millions of, of receptor candidates, an appropriate semiconductor chip that
that has the capacity to analyze those receptors digitally. And this is a game changer for the industry. The biosensor market is a 25 billion uh, industry. 18 billion correspond to the digital segment. Now listen to this. 80% of this segment falls into the blood, blood glucose analyzers. As explained before, the bottleneck is the lack of these receptors. And solving this problem is a tremendous market opportunity. While the pharma sector has very well established uh, technologies for drug discovery to fulfill their pipelines, biosensor manufacturers don't have such technology. And the fastest way to monetize all our efforts is filling this gap by a strong IP strategy and with new receptors. Applied will license this receptor, helping biosensor companies to introduce into the market new digital biomedical diagnostic devices. In our long-term goal, we want to create our own devices uh, based on the knowledge of, of, based on the knowledge of millions of receptors tested in-house. We have earned the trust of venture capitals and silicon catalysts, the only global accelerator specializing in semiconductor development. We are now looking for partnerships for early adopters and raising four million to finish our technology um, in within the next two years. So I hope, sorry for the starting of this, uh, of this speeching, I hope we can have the opportunity to explain personally more about our technology. Okay, Thank no worries. Much. Thank you so much, Applied Biotech Corporation. We, we did give you a little bit of extra time there uh, due to the technical difficulties. Um, I'd like, now, would now like to invite Ms. Subramanian to open our Q&A session, which we will have three minutes for. Thank you. I cannot hear. We're unable to hear your audio yet, uh, Ms. Obramanian. Not yet. All right, uh, we may have lost the connection, so we haven't started the Q&A session, but perhaps could we start with the judges that are in attendance? Mr. Sethi, perhaps, if you'd like to lead us off. Right. Any uh, view on the team? You didn't mention the team in the pitch deck. Uh, sorry? Uh, the yeah. team members. Yeah. So, who are? In the, yeah. so we have a team of scientific people coming from, it's a multidisciplinary development. This, this is not only coming from biochemistry and chemistry, we have also electronic engineers, electronic engineers specialize in semiconductor technology also, so uh, it's, it's a large team of different fields that are bringing together all this technology. Uh, right, and any patents you have yeah. applied? We are actually now in the national phases uh, patenting the core technology, which is the chip itself uh, that has this capacity to analyze uh, digitally molecular interaction. Any revenues so far? Uh, not so far, because we are in the middle, we are an early stage company building the technology, actually, and we hope to be uh, in a commercial st stage within the next two years. Okay, Ms. Dimitrova, perhaps if you have any questions, we still have a couple minutes remaining. Again, about the scientific backing of the technology, um, any, I mean, I suppose you come later, but what are you doing now for? It. Uh, sorry? The scientific backing, any approvals, regulatory approvals? The scientific? Backing, the scientific proof okay, of, the so use of the technology. Actually, what we are doing here uh, regarding the synthesizing um, is not something that we apply invented. It's something that is already invented, the way to synthesize massively this amount of chemistry over a very small area. Uh, our original part is the semiconductor chip that has the capacity to interrogate digitally all these uh, synthesized molecules. 
and the technical background of this digital analysis is well known in a low scale. So uh, the, the new part of applied is the massification of this uh, digital interrogation of molecules. It's very well known how to convert these interactions into electricity. We are doing it massively. Okay, thank you. If there are no remaining questions, thank you. Uh, AppLife Biotech Corporation, you may return to your seat. All right, a little bit of time for the judges for their deliberation as well. As we prep the stage, we still have, I believe, three more presentations to go here today. Joining us for our fifth startup here on day two, Stam, come on up on the stage. All right, four minutes on the clock. If you're ready to go, good luck. Hello, I'm Roman from Stam. Uh, I want to start with a, a question. What industry hasn't had any radical changes, I would say, in the last I don't know, 100 years? If you guess, if you guess by manufacturing, you are correct. And I'm going to quick touch on, on COVID. COVID has exposed the lack of capacity for biomanufacturing and, and the lack of um, preparedness, especially in, a, in an emergency context. So basically, biomanufacturing is its problem itself. Biomanufacturing is the bottleneck of biomanufacturing for future um, therapeutic needs, right? So. And biomanufacturing is everywhere, biotech, food, cosmetics. Let's just keep on, on healthcare. That's why we're here, right? So we need to change biomanufacturing as we know it. Why now? Well, this graph kind of, kind of explains it. The biologic industry is facing unprecedented growth. And again, the biomanufacturing, it is the bottleneck for biomanufacturing. So considering the exponential approval that is expected for the next decade from the regulatory agencies, expected to increase a thousand percent. Clearly, biomanufacturing is an issue for future, for future needs of um, treatments, right? So at STAM, we are here to reinvent our, uh, biomanufacturing with one purpose, decentralize the access to bioprocesses. The question is, okay, how you plan on doing it, right? We had developed the first methodology for uh, continuous biomanufacturing using, uh, using microfluidics and 3D printing. For biologics, generally speaking, for bio biomanufacturing, but in this case, for biologics. But, okay, so, Stam, we're thinking we need to change. The, the solution for biomanufacturing is changing biomanufacturing. So we're reinventing bioprocessing, and we're inspired by nature. Why we're inspired by nature? We find in nature many efficient solutions on how to grow cells, like blood vessels, vegetable vessels, and that's where we build our microfluid bioreactors. That basically, our microfluid bioreactor mimics nature like a microvascular system. So how do we scale this? Good question. 3D printing. And we build our own 3D printer for us to be able to, to, to print a bioreactor with the requirements we need. So now we're ready to made by manufacturing, easy, scalable, and repeatable. Introducing to you our bioprocessor, it's an all-in-one plug-and-play desktop unit that replaces a whole biotech facility. We'll, we'll start like we want to say a revolution. Why? This is an actual facility. This is an example. We will change from this to this. Literally, that's, a, that's the change we're doing in a bio facility. So our bioreactor can produce between 70 and 200 grams of protein per day. It reduces the footprint of our facility in 200 times. It processes volume between 100 and 400 times 
and has a productivity increase on, on 70, in 70 tons. So by manufacturing everywhere for everyone, by just an increasing value of um, the installed capacity just by imprinting by rack. Market-wise, multiple target, multiple segments, and a market cap on biomanufacturing of 350 billion. And we already started. We got a, we closed a Series A uh, last February for 70 million. And just touching upon quickly on on ex expansion, we tripled our people in a year. We expect to be 240 for next year. We're going to Switzerland to build our first new facility abroad. And so join the next biotech revolution. Um, thank you very much. Wow, perfect timing. Thank right you. you. Good stuff. Um, and now we'd like to allow our judges, starting with Mr. Sethi perhaps, to open our Q&A session, three minutes on the clock. Uh, yes, I think you showed the, the team expansion, but any revenues you have right now? No, we are pre-commercial. Um, that's, that's where we show our expansion in terms of uh, talent and, and expansion to other countries, because we, are, we have some MOUs, letter of intent, and agreements with uh, some pharmaceutical, large pharmaceutical companies, many startups that are like building their, uh, their bio biologics, but we are pre-commercial. Right, but what is the revenue model, right? Who will pay for it? Is royalties or you will sell to other manufacturers? That, that's a good question. So we have three different uh, revenue models. One is us becoming the CDMO for, for other companies us deploying or bioreactor to other facilities, like Pfizer needs to change their, their facility, it needs to uh, replace it, we'll replace it with ours. And the other, one is, the other one is perhaps the most important one in the future is the data. We have so much data in terms of what a cell does in a bioreactor that we can um, eventually predict what was gonna happen, what's going to happen. So that's the three models. And who will pay for it? Startups. I mean, um, the startups. It would be the if we become a CMO, that company, and if we produce for other parties, um, royalties as well on the on the production. Okay. Any additional questions? We still have a, about ninety seconds, Mr. Mitrova. I'm trying to wrap my head around the innovation yep. about it. It's about the new way of doing something that is already being done, like a process innovation. Exactly, because as I was saying, bioprocessing, biomanufacturing is from, from beer to biologics, right? But it's been done the same way for many, many years. So there's no, it's the same, the, the, the only improvement was in cleanliness of stainless steel tanks. But in terms of productivity, it doesn't, doesn't get any, better and it improved but it's not radically changed. With this we changed radically how we can produce not just biology but other 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 bioprocesses. But I think most important of all is how we can actually deploy bioreactors anywhere at any time. And that will help like in third world countries for example. Uh, basically this will reduce the cost of uh, R&D for any biology. It will reduce the the burden in any healthcare system because this is so much less expensive, more efficient, and, and more um, practical in terms of where you can send it at any time. That will radically change the bioprocessing, bio, bio manufacturing everywhere. Go ahead. Has any country uptaken it so far? Do we're moving to Switzerland on in. We're moving to Switzerland in yeah, in Q1. Good. Great. Thank you. Stam, thank you for your presentation and the uh, Q&A. You may return to your seat while the judges will have a few moments to deliberate. We still have a couple more presentations coming up, but if you'd like to take this opportunity to help us with the scoring as well, please do scan the QR code up on the screen behind me, or beside me rather. All right, we're set for our sixth presentation here today. I'd like to invite Untech up on the stage. Uh, 
Hi there. There's your uh, microphone and clicker. We'll put four minutes on the clock. The uh, stage is yours. Good luck. Hello, everyone. Today, I will share with you the solution for a dramatic problem that affects millions of patients around the world. Today, I will present you UNTEC, the cure for chronic wounds. Chronic wounds are not regular injuries, are a complex injuries that don't heal and in many cases lead to amputation. These patients have a terrible uh, quality of life. Imagine, for example, living with pain during years. And this problem affects more than 120 million people around the world and generates a market of more than $18 billion per year only in products. This represents a huge opportunity because most of the products in the market are merely palliatives. That is why FDA considers chronic wounds as an unmet medical need. But why uh, these products fail? Because they don't attack all the causes that avoid healing at the same time, as chronic wounds associations consensus recommend. And that is exactly what we have developed in UNTEC, an all-in-one solution for a multifactorial problem. Here we can see how uh, the therapeutic effectiveness demonstrated during our clinical proof of concept. UNTEC accelerate the healing process from years to months, drastically reduce the possibility of amputation and allowing the patient to remain ambulatory. UNTEC is a combination product of five marketed small molecules and one marketed enzyme in the pharmaceutical form of a gel, so we don't expect big uh, regulatory barriers. As we can see in this slide, UNTEC is the only one providing all therapeutic requirements in one product and at the same time. This transforms UNTEC in a unique and the most promising solution for chronic wounds in the world. All these properties were demonstrated during our preclinical studies. Our research was recognized with different international scientific awards and were published in the best journals and books in the file. We co-founded UNTEC together with Dr. Alberto Ramos to combine our experience and knowledge in science and business. Alberto is the main inventor of this technology and has been researching chronic wounds for the past 17 years. My background is mainly in business and I co-founded other startups in Europe and US. Doctors Chavez and Cerusico did their PhDs and postdoctoral studies researching uh, the pathophysiology of chronic wounds and the action mechanism of our medication. And Marcelo Grava is our expert in intellectual property with hundreds of patents granted. And we count with the support of a great advisory board. In this way, we cover all the fields that this kind of project needs. Now I would like to share with you the key progress in these two areas. We have a strong patent granted in the USA and filed in 45 more countries, and we have started clinical phase one. Our business model implies a out license after clinical phase two, and we have two letter of intent. And this business plan was validated by organization of Stanford, uh, MIT, Samsung, or Singularity University, uh, our first invest inventor, investor. Sorry. And recently, we were selected as one of the top five uh, wound care startups in the world, and we are working, we are the only one working in a medication. Next steps, our Series A to achieve clinical phase two. Finally, in UNTEC, we believe in transferring the knowledge to the society. We really know how these patients are suffering, and we want to heal them. Thanks. All right, thank you, UNTEC. That wraps up your presentation. Um, we'd like to invite Alberto, the uh, co-founder, up on the stage because the Q&A session will be handled by, uh, by Alberto. So, judges, we'll start with Ms. Uh, Dimitrova. You can start off our Q&A session. you got three minutes. Thank you. So, this is a drug, the, or uh, it's a drug? It is a drug, yes. Okay. It, it, it's a, a combination product. It's when you use different drugs for different purposes, but together they, they act synergically. It's a combination of existing drugs. Yeah, that's, that's why we do not expect a big regulatory barrier, because we already know pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of each one. So the approval that you would seek is the interaction of all of these? Yeah, there is a path in FDA that is called 502B path, 
that is a fast track when you use that this, this kind of products. And what type of wounds? For, Sorry? For which type of conditions are the wounds? From any wound or from what conditions? Oh, the, the, the most common are diabetic foot ulcers, bed sores for people who is prostrated, uh, and vascular ulcers too. Right. Yes, so, uh, so it's a gel, right, basically? Yes, uh, it's a okay. gel. So what, what's the vision? You said uh, outlier sensing is the vision, right? Do you imagine being a pharmaceutical manufacturer in the long term? Well, we are in between two worlds because the market belongs to biomedical companies, but we are a drug. So we expect a co-development with pharma, but that outlines into two biomedical companies like 3M or Johnson & Johnson. So uh, that's the, biz the business model. That's why we, we applied in 45 countries because maybe we can achieve a multi-out-licensing model. Okay, and the revenue model would be then royalties, right, from them? That, that's right. In, in our case, um, if, we, if you, if you out-license after clinical phase two, you diminish the, the risk of the project because we, you already demonstrated the therapeutic effectiveness and and you can negotiate maybe in between 15 to 25 percent of, of, of uh, royalties. And how do you currently deploy the testing of it in these 45 countries in clinics or directly to patients? Or? There is something called uh, regulatory tree. If you approve something, for example, in FDA, you can just send the results to other regulatory entities and you will be approved to in that countries. And in the trial phase now that you were showing the results? No, uh, we, we started in Argentina because we want to, to have clinical uh, results before opening our Series A. Okay, thank you. Untech, thank you. You may return to your seats momentarily. Big round of applause. All right, so we're going to allow the judges again a little bit of time for deliberation and one more final reminder to help us take part in the scoring as well by scanning the QR, uh, QR code on the screen beside me. And just a little announcement as well, our seventh startup uh, will not be presenting today, so this will likely be our final presentation for today. And I'd like to invite We4 Leadership, the uh, first startup that presented. If you could uh, turn on your screen as well. We4 Leadership, if you're there, if you don't mind turning on your screen momentarily. There you go. Hi. Welcome back. Okay, uh, the reason I ask you to turn on your camera is uh, we're going to take a group picture before we wrap things up here for now. And Ms. Subramanian, thank you as well for... Uh, and I'd like to invite the startups. Come on back up on the stage. Uh, we're going to take a group pic along with our judges as well if, uh, if the judges are done. And we're going to make two rows here, so... We'll help you guys get sorted out. All right, thank you everyone and distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally reached the end of our event here on day two. On behalf of the entire committee, I'd like to thank 
First of all, all three judges, all of these startup founders joining us here today on day two and day one as well. I see some of you back here and uh, as well as the guests for attending and participating in our event. For your information, the next item on the today's agenda, I'm sure you're all eagerly anticipating the awarding session. So that's taking place at the BICC Mangupura Hall. Uh, and that just about does it. I will see you guys at the awarding session. I'm Paul Palelli signing off for now and wishing you all the best of luck in your pursuit for innovation. Recover together, recover stronger.